Haiti is now preparing to bury former dictator Jean Cog Baby Doc Duvalier, but there's a lot of controversy over his send off. Many are angry over plans to honor the man who took control of Haiti, Haiti following his father's dictatorship. Thousands of Haitians were killed during Baby Doc's reign. His militia used brutal means to control political opponents, and the dictator is also condemned by many for stealing millions while the nation suffered in poverty. Haitian journalist Richard Widmire is the general manager of Radio Metropole Haiti, and he joins us from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Hi, Richard. Good to see you. Hi. The truth is, it's been it's been a whole generation. There's a whole generation of young people, and even some not so young people uh, that were not alive or not old enough to remember Baby Doc uh, at the time that he was driven out of Haiti. Will you just sort of give us a quick history primer about what conditions were like under his dictatorship? Yes, sure. And um, thanks for having me. Um, the years from 1971 until 1986, when Jean-Claude Duvalier was in power, we still had the remnants of a very strong dictatorship that was established by his father, Papa Doc Francois Duvalier. And um, this could be resumed by saying this was a period where you had uh, still the remnants, I would say, of a bloody regime. No political rights, no press freedom, um, power based on total fear, no justice uh, system working normally, and uh, I would say also rampant um, corruption. That probably, I, I think these probably would explain how uh, the Duvalier regime was functioning even after uh, Papa Dog died. However, it should be, there, a difference should be made between the Papa Doc years and Jean-Claude Duvalier's years in power. There was an opening being made at the time where the press was being a little bit more open, and we could even get to the point where we, were, uh, we could criticize the government, of course, to a certain extent. Uh, small newspapers were being published, and uh, they were also criticizing the government. So there was a balance of power between the press and the government that was already being established at the time. And uh, this went until 1980, when the government really decided to crack down on the press and uh, from 1980 to 1986, the government tried to stay in power until, of course, um, inevitably Jean-Claude had to leave the country in, in 1986. Yeah, and he was in exile for 25 years in France, returned to Haiti in 2011. Uh, there was first a ruling that uh, a statute of limitation had expired on uh, charges uh, against Duvalier. And then earlier this year, uh, there was a ruling that he could be charged with crimes against humanity under international law. How did Haitians, modern day Haitians, regard Baby Doc and whether or not he should be held uh, accountable for some of the at least accusations against him as a dictator? Well, this is the big question. That's the question, of course, everybody is talking about. I wouldn't like to wor use the word this or that all this is irrelevant because there has been many people who have suffered tremendously under the Duvalier regime. However, when Jean-Claude Duvalier came back to Haiti in 2011, there were no demonstrations, no street demonstrations, and only a few victims went on national television and on radio to accuse the former dictator of uh, malversation and other things that he was accused of. And the, concerning the trial uh, per se, the uh, justice in Haiti says that there are no prescriptions in Haiti to try Jean-Claude Duvalier after 10 years. Uh, normally, if anybody had pressed charges, then the charges would have had to be before those 10 years. After 10 years, if no charges were pressed, then the Haitian law says here that there was no prescription for them to put him on trial. Now, Amnesty International and many other international organizations, human rights organizations, mm -hmm. have pressured uh, the Haitians here to uh, tried Duvalier for uh, crimes against humanity, but uh, that did not happen. Yes, of course, because of his sudden death. Richard Woodmeyer, thank you so much for your time. It was good to talk to you. Thank you for having me.